Ladies and gentlemen, you have locked into Rap Life. We're going to talk to Low Key. We're going to talk to Nadeska. What are the most important conversations that are going on in hip hop right now, as well as run through some of the hottest songs on the playlist. So y'all keep it locked right here. This is Rap Life. Let's start out with the new music that dropped this week. Young Thug and Gunna, YSL, Young Stoner Life Records dropped the project. Drake, Travis Scott, Uzi Vert, Cuddy, Big Sean, Lil Baby, Meek Mill, Future Rowdy Rebel. Uh, it's currently the number one album on Apple Music. Uh, Nadeska, I know you took some time to check a few tracks. Uh, any feedback on this Young Thug and Gunna? Yeah, I'm going to say I never know. I don't know if I ever told you guys on this podcast that I actually really love Young Thug. He's probably one of four artists not named J. Cole or Kendrick Lamar that could get me to listen to 23 songs in one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a cool project. Um, I can't say that I love every song from one to 23, but a couple joints I like. Of course, Young Thug and Gunna on Ski, which was a single. I actually like Damon's Dancing with Travis Scott. The Drake feature is cool. Um what else is on here? My favorite here? joint is that Rowdy Rebel joint. I mean, I'm biased. Maybe I'm in New mm -hmm. York and I'm just excited to hear Rebel on all these, <laughs> you know, and getting all this love. But I don't know about you, Lo, but that shit sound right to me. Nah, you know, I'm just proud that Rowdy is now getting back to the groove of things. I'm glad that that Thug picked him up and put him on this big, important project. 23, trunks, I mean, 23 songs is a little bit too much for me. Um, so I'm, you know, sticking with the Rowdy Rebel feature and the Meek Mill feature. Uh, I know you love when Drake switches his voice up and gives us new styles. <laughs> Yo, so Drake got styles. This is YSL style on this album. You know what I'm and saying? I, if he's in the UK, he got it. the UK style. If, you yeah. know, he's rapping with a rapper in the South, he sound like he got South slang. If he's in Canada, he sounds Canadian. If he's on a Caribbean record, he got Patois for you. Drizzy Drake jumped on this young thug and had the young thug flow. I was like, go ahead, Drizzy. Drake nah, it I up, think, baby. You know, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I love it. I love it. But I, I think Thug is trying to set himself up for the summer. And I think this is the perfect project to do that. Um, he's got enough songs, got enough content for it to last throughout the summer. But like I said, that Rowdy Rebel feature is my favorite one on the project. So that's a standout for me. Nadeska, I thought um, you would actually really love the Uzi Vert song, which is really like a self, kind of like an upliftment of my brother's song. I mean, they just, it was a whole song about right, these brothers just being proud of each other, the whole song. I thought that would be right up your alley. Yo, it's a cute I'm proud of you. No, I'm proud of you. <laughs> no, I'm proud of you. No, 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 I'm proud of you. You know what it is? It reminds me of this joint that Young Thug has with Earth Gang, uh, Proud of You. Um, and uh -huh. so when I was listening to it for the first time, I had that hook kind of stuck in my head. But like the song is actually cool. And the thing with me in a project this long, I'm going to need a few more listens. And then I find the singles I really like and I could play those over and over. So it's like cute. I think for me, what's cool about this project is that... Um, I love Young Thug as a solo artist, but I think more and more he's proving that he just is a great a &R and can put so much great talent together. Right, like, right. If you think about the crazy amount of features he has on this project, it is nuts. He even has Kid Cudi on a record. And I was curious what that would sound like. And it kind of works with the whole Moon Man Cudi theme. So for me, I hope this doesn't mean that there's not another Thug solo album coming soon. But also, I'm just really excited to see what he does in, as an executive over the next five to 10 years. This man has an incredible ear for talent. He's like a Khaled now. I feel like in the way he has like the sway to put big records like this together. It's very impressive. Well, and, and this, you know, also for the artists that are on uh, YSL. So you have, uh, let's see here, Carlay, T-Shine. Uh, you have Strick, um, Y&W Melly. I think Lil Keed is on there too. Um, so this also helps him showcase not only his relationships and how much He's important to the game by getting all these other marquee artists to want to be a part of this project. Uh, but it also helps set up his artists to be associated with these other marquee artists as well. And we got to salute Saweetie, too. My girl Saweetie still firing <laughs> off. Pretty Summer Playlist Season 1. She says she's going to be dropping these playlists every summer to showcase artists that are, you know, up next. I think that's a great strategy for an, uh, a new artist like Sweetie to really create a community of artists that are supporting her and that she's uplifting. We see it, but I don't think we see it very often. And I think especially coming from a, a female rapper, we know how it is. Like people love to pit these artists against each other and create all this conflict. So I think Sweetie getting out ahead of this, she's of course like collaborated with a lot of other artists as well. But being so early in her career, she's about to drop an album soon. Uh, I think that... 
you know, that takes a lot of your energy and your focus. So to make time in that schedule to still highlight other artists by putting out an entire project, I think that's really, really dope. Now, Lo, do you want to weigh in on the fans speculating that Saweetie was taking shots at her ex Quavo on the song <laughs> Seesaw? You see? He there's, had to do it, bro. He had to do it. There's no, bro, there's no speculation. Like, we know what it is. <laughs> The timing of this is, it just lines up with, with everything that happened. We know she's talking to Quavo. I'm sure Quavo's going to have something to say on Culture 3 when Migos drop that project. But let's not turn a blind eye and be like, oh, my God, we don't know who she's talking about. Ebro, you know who she's talking about. Nadeska, you know who she's talking about. Listeners, y'all know who she's talking about. She's airing Quavo out. We understand what's happening. The timing is perfect. Cool. New project is out. And, yeah, now we're talking about it again. <laughs> so so the so the breakup is real and the use of the breakup to promote is also real. I mean, if if I'm a betting man, yes, the breakup is real and she's using it and she's using it to her benefit. Uh we got to pivot, man. Uh somebody we saw last week and the week prior, right around the time of DMX passing, Black Rob video started surfacing. A Black Rob talking to the camera in the hospital, talking about he's been battling health issues for five years and several strokes and other ailments. Well, over the weekend, uh, news uh, was made public that Black Rob has passed away. Uh, you know, I think, you know, we can easily say that when Bad Boy was... Um, you know, struggling to have different artists on the label around 2000, uh, Black Rob with that woe movement and all of those records really helped to kind of ignite another wave and moment for Bad Boy uh, and having some hits. Um, a lot of people started coming for Diddy, uh, you know, over the weekend. Um when Black Rob passed, and even prior to that, when there was videos of him not doing well. Um, I, I just want to say, before I throw it to Nadeska and Lowe, according to people close to Black Rob, um, Diddy has been trying to help for several years. And um, I don't know what ailments Black Rob had other than kidney failure, but there had been word of Black Rob uh, not doing so well with some other issues uh, and personal issues prior to this that could lead to these kind of health issues, um, substance abuse, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I don't know, Nadeska, if you saw a lot of people coming for Diddy, but that seems where people want to place the blame today because Diddy is doing so well financially and there's several artists that have been around Diddy uh, that he signed or you know worked with that um, are not doing so well. Yeah, I noticed in the comments of a lot of videos, people were, you know, adding Diddy, uh, fix this, it shouldn't be like this, help this man kind of thing. But to your point, I understand when people are hurt and they're upset, the first thing that you want to do is point fingers, you know, and blame someone. And I think Diddy is the easiest person to point fingers at because we've heard in the past that deals with Bad Boy and with Puff were a little bit messy. Maybe artists didn't always get paid what they need to. Like, I remember Mace famously speaking on this and saying, you know, he had to give, like, an arm and a leg to get out of that contract. But if Black Rob had other things going on behind the scenes that we didn't know about, I don't think it's fair. Or at least I wouldn't jump out and necessarily just try to blame Diddy for this. But I will say my most vivid memory of Black Rob up until this point was in the video for Whoa. That's such a big record. It's such a fun New York record. So seeing those videos of him talking about having four strokes and being homeless and just looking so gaunt that was really like a kick in 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 the gut you never want to see anyone like that so it was really really difficult for me to watch those videos personally Lo, do you you know if diddy was just a a non-public record executive you know we've heard about bad deals uh, between artists and labels for a long time or, and by bad deals, it's just not in the artist's favor. Right. And it's not, it's either not a deal they knew they were getting into and, or they feel like they should be let out of the deal because it's prohibiting them from doing other things that they want to do creatively. And the label's like, well, you haven't turned in your albums and you didn't stick to the agreement or you signed this agreement and, it, and we're not changing this agreement. If Diddy wasn't black, a black man, would people still be coming for Diddy in this scenario? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I think because of you know how big of a figure he is and who he's associated with and what he's done for the game, um, and the things that he's done for for the people in the game, they're looking for when things go bad for him to be the savior as well. And sometimes I think like that's not fair, but I understand why because of every yeah, artist it. he's worked with. Um, 
has not necessarily seen the same success as him. So it's kind of like he's the scapegoat. He's the one that said, you know, well, why isn't this artist, you know, as big as you? Or why is this artist having health issues? Or why is this artist homeless? Or why is this artist not on top? And those answers are just not there for Puff. And unfortunately, he's put himself in certain situations that he's the, he's the only victor. He's the only one that comes out on top. And it sucks. Well, because he's the record executive. Yeah. And guess who yeah. usually comes out on top with any other artist out here? The record executive. The record executives. The bank. Yeah. The person fronting the money. The person mm. in control of the deal. Mm. You know, uh, guess who else comes out on top when you gamble in Vegas? The house. Whoever's financing this situation and creating the platform is usually the one that comes out on top. Well, That's Ibram, how, you know, go ahead. Nadeska. Sorry, you were mentioning that behind the scenes, it sounds like Diddy was trying to reach out or help for a year. So was it that the rift between them was so deep that Black Rob didn't necessarily want to accept help? N no, I, I, I don't I can't really speak with other than hearsay uh, from people close to the situation uh, that talk about just, you know, look, I can I can hand somebody a million dollars. What they do with that money, you know, after it's given to them is often a problem when people have other issues going on. And so short of me literally bringing them in, babysitting them, caring for them, you know, and not saying that this is the Diddy Black Rob scenario, but from what I can tell, Diddy has been trying to help both financially and in in an emotional way. Um, but it's still, you know, um, Black Rob was not able to get back up on his feet. Uh, and another unfortunate scenario, um, DMX. You know, um, DMX, I don't know if you have the details in front of you, uh, Nadeska, with regard to the memorial services. Um, I heard, all I've heard so far is that there's something planned at Barclay. What do you have? Yeah, so it doesn't look like there's an official date yet. It's just later this month. So that's going to happen sometime in April. And they're saying they chose this venue because this was the last place that X actually performed back in 2019. So they thought that it would make sense. And then, you know, following that memorial, that's a public memorial, then there will be a private funeral uh, for the family. So, um, you know, we're still sort of in the middle of COVID. They're rolling out vaccines, but things are not 100% safe. So I'm sure it's going to take them some time to figure out logistics, how people are going to be able to be in there and spaced out. But I think it's really great that, um, you know, his fans are still going to get to, to pay tribute in a public service. Um, I heard a rumor. I don't know if you heard this low about a live stream. Had you heard that also, that that's no. why this was happening at the Barclay? I didn't hear anything um, about a live stream. Um, I think it's going to be ticketed, but I didn't hear anything about it being broadcasted anywhere. Um, but I'm just it would make stuff sense right though, now. right? Because that's it what they would, did for, yeah, for Nipsey as well. Because even if some people can't attend, most people won't. He has fans all over the world. So it would be cool if you could like tune in and watch it from home. If you guys were a family of an icon like DMX, we'll start with you, Nadeska. Um, when would you feel okay, like if this was your family member, for them to put out a new album of material? Because we all know that Swizz and X were recording. I don't know how much material there is, but when does that feel like the right time? If this was, if you were close to this scenario? Honestly, it just depends on when the music was properly completed. I think sometimes with posthumous albums, it feels like they get rushed and the songs sound incomplete. I don't know if they're just trying to get it out as soon as possible while people are still freshly uh, grieving and mourning an artist. But to me, it would just need however long. It could be months. It could be a year. And you know, with someone like Swizz involved who really cared about DMX, I don't think he would let a pro project like that come out rushed. It would just need to feel like it actually honors DMX's legacy and lives up to his standard. Or at least that's how I would feel if it was my loved one. Low, you got any insight here? Um, yeah, I would. I would wait a year. Um, also, the people connected to it. Um, I don't want any new producers jumping in on it. I, you know, I want the same people that work with you know my family member their entire career handling that project. I don't want any well anyone else to benefit from it. Um, but yeah, like with Swizz, I I would completely trust Swizz. You know, I would completely trust his timeline. Um, but as long as it felt right, as long as it was complete. And as long as they honored, you know, who my family member was, um, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But uh, maybe I'd wait like a year. Yeah, so far, um, a year. It's 928% it, increase 
since DMX in his streams since DMX passing. So clearly, you know, not only uh, you know, people going in to listen to his hits, but I'm sure um, you know, people even, you know, remembering like all of the music that he had. I don't know if that happened for you guys of just like yo, yo, wait, oh, why? Ah, I mean, there's so many records. There's so much music. Yo, rest in peace to DMX, man, and all the family and friends and fans affected by it. We send love and light. It's been the Rap Life Review for Nadeska and Low. I am Ebro, and uh, you can check out the Rap Life Review if you, if you subscribe. You get updates every time we put up a new episode uh, right here on this YouTube page. Or, or, excuse me, and we want you to add the Rap Life playlist in Apple Music so you can keep up to the time on all the biggest records in rap. All right? Love y'all, man. See y'all next week.